Tautog Blackfish Seminar Series by Ken Westerfeld. Video 2, Top Secrets of Tog Jigging. The use of jig heads for tog began in the western Long Island Sound, as far as we know. To my knowledge, local anglers from the New Rochelle, New York area began fishing with jig heads in the shallow waters and rocky shorelines of the Long Island Sound. It proved to be a very successful presentation for targeting quality tog. John Knight at Hudson Park Bait and Tackle in New Rochelle heard about this in the early to mid-2000s and began making the first ever dedicated tog jigs. He called them title tails. Jig fishing for tog is a lighter and sportier presentation as opposed to the conventional tog fishing method more equally matched to the average size of the fish that you are targeting. It's fun, highly effective, and makes great sense. Charter captains and local anglers in the Western Sound learned about the technique and began employing it. Soon it was being talked about in magazines and all over the internet by 2007-2008. Partly why the effectiveness of tog jigs was discovered was the abundance of Asian crabs, a new successful invasive crab species. The Asian crab arrived in the USA in the scuppers of freighter ships and took up residence on U.S. shorelines. The Asian crab is an invasive shoreline crab species. It's a very aggressive species and is out-competing other native crabs and earlier transplanted crab species, like green crabs, for example. For this reason, tog have adapted to this new abundant food supply and remain in shallow water through longer periods of the year, regardless of water temperature in areas where Asian crabs are abundant. With the success of jig head fishing came a total package for the presentation. Jig fishing was originally done with light spinning rods in the 6 to 12 pound test or 8 to 17 pound test class. Lighter braided lines were used which reduced water drag on the line so anglers could hold bottom with very light jig heads. 3,000 and 4,000 size spinning reels were generally used. 30 to 50 pound test leaders were used, although lighter leader proved to get more bites in shallow water. The parabolic bend of the light spinning rods provided forgiveness for no stretch braided lines. The lighter the jig, the more bites anglers noticed they would receive. Jigs like tidal tails with small hooks accommodated the small Asian crabs perfectly. Some anglers began adapting the jig presentation using bait cast rod and reels, to each his own, I say. Personally, I have gotten snagged with bait cast reels and had my braided line break at the first contact point, the level wind. That's why I prefer spinning gear myself, personally. Tackle that I personally use. Bull Bay Real Animals Series. 7 foot 6 inch, 8 to 17 pound test spinning rod. Heavy, fast action. Pen Conflict 2, 4,000 size spinning reel. 15 or 20 pound test Power Pro Slick 8 braided line in high visibility colors. 30 or 40 pound test Berkeley fluorocarbon leader, G3 knotted to my braided running line. Asylum tog jigs tied on a loop knot. For my rigging techniques, please refer to my video, How to Rig for Blackfish slash Tog Jigging, on this channel, Ken Westerfeld Fishing. Thank you. Many local anglers, like myself, learned about the presentation and began employing it very successfully.
Blackfish like these, pictured right, became a very common sight on Western Long Island Sound tog trips. Double-digit tog became fairly commonplace. Many tog in the five-pound-plus class were a daily occurrence for several years running during autumn tog seasons throughout the mid-2000s. Then tog numbers in the Western Sound were noted to take a dramatic decrease from an abundance of commercial overfishing from about 2014 going forward to the present. Tog jigs begin to head south to the ocean. In early fall of 2009, I began taking tog jigs with me on commercial tog trips in the ocean and quickly discovered stellar results. The use of tog jigs immediately became an important part of most future tog trips for myself and my commercially licensed captain, Eddie Parker. The popularity of tog jigs spread quickly and tackle shops all over began carrying them. Local tackle shop owners in the New York City area began booking tog jigging trips in Rhode Island. The fish pictured right is from a Newport, Rhode Island charter aboard Real Easy Charters, a.k.a. Newport Sport Fishing, with Captain Robert Taylor. Rhode Island tog jigging trips are generally known for abundant fast action and good numbers of double-digit size trophy tog. Anglers began using tog jigs in the ocean up and down the Atlantic coastal states with good to fantastic success. Soon, many competitive companies were making their own versions of tog jigs in many varieties. With jigs now being fished in the ocean, there was a necessity for jigs with larger hooks to accommodate larger crabs used for bait, like greens and white crabs. Know which crab species to apply in each different habitat situation. Asian crabs or greens in shallow onshore or nearshore environments. Green crabs or whites in inshore waters or medium depths. My preference for deeper offshore waters are white crabs. Greens can be used successfully at times, but not usually with as good of results that the white crabs provide. If you're enjoying this video, please hit like. share, and subscribe to this channel, Ken Westerfeld Fishing. Thank you for watching. Asylum Tog Bugs. Tog Jigs became my exclusive brand of Tog Jigs. This is a great grassroots organic small brand with a superior product originated by a young lady named Alyssa Zuppi from a true Connecticut outdoors family. Well-made, sturdy, strong, sharp hooks, great visually attracting colors, stealthy in size and shape, with a very effective assortment of weight sizes. She uses her unique brand and design to contribute to charities like Wounded Warriors and Sick Children's Charities. Most importantly, these jigs work deadly. Buy them, you won't be disappointed. My friends and I began seeking trophy class tog on jigs. We began trying jig fishing on our annual Maryland trophy tog trips aboard Fishbound Charters with Captain Kane Bounds, achieving some impressive results, also breaking a rod or two. <laughs> Um, so to the right, you see a 16 pound, four ounce fish that I caught on Fish Whisperer Charters in Wachapreague, Virginia on February 9th, 2018. And that was uh, skippered by Captain Chase Eberly. And then further right is a 17 pound, eight ounce tog that I caught on Fishbound Charters in Ocean City, Maryland. That was on December... 17th 2018 skippered by captain kane bounds and coincidentally you can view that catch 
it is the first video on this channel. A new men's 20 pound test IGFA line class record was landed on a tog jig and a light spinning rod. On November 19, 2016, Captain Dustin Strail landed this 22 pound 8 ounce at 33 inches long tall tog aboard Fins and Feathers Charters out of Red Bank, New Jersey. This was the greatest light tackle tog catch known to date. Ken's Top Tog Jigging Tips Fish fine. Jig fishing is finesse fishing. The lightest jig that conditions will allow will always get you the most bites. The conditions tell you everything about how to fish. You should barely maintain bottom contact. You probably won't feel the bottom with the correct size jig, but you can see that your jig is on the bottom by your line slacking up if you drop the tip of your rod. If you feel your jig crashing into the bottom, it's probably too heavy. If you're feeling little bites but tog aren't picking the jig up, then it's also probably too heavy. Avoid tangling your fellow anglers whenever possible. Always fish courteously and don't waste time in tangles if it can be avoided. If an angler does tangle you up, don't lose your cool. Just get untangled or retie and get back in the bite ASAP. Try to avoid tangling again. Try to have an additional rod and reel tied and ready to fish in case of a snag or break off. Stay in the bite while fish are chewing. Sometimes bite periods don't last long. Don't waste time re-rigging if you can avoid it. Don't be a jig snob. If the tide or current is running too hard that you can't effectively fish a jig of two and a half ounces or less, then make sure you also have a conventional rod and reel tied up with a rig ready to fish. If you need a jig heavier than two and a half ounces to hold the bottom, then it really defeats the purpose, effectiveness, and novelty of using a jig. Go to a rig and hopefully keep hooking fish. Don't waste time during your fishing trip. Make the minutes count because they fly by quickly. There is a time and place for everything. There's a time to use a jig and there's a time to fish with a rig. Know the difference. Thank you all for joining me once again for the Tautog Blackfish Seminar Series by me, Ken Westerfeld. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and interesting. If you did, please be on the lookout for the next segment of my seminar series, video number three, Wreck Fishing for Tautog. Stay well.